All right, welcome to Jimmy and Jack in the Morning. Yeah, this is the 2020 SoCal Showdown here. We've been shooting the last few days here. This is the gold medal matches of the last weekend. Yep, I am Jimmy Lutz. I'm Jack Williams. And we are here, we are starting with Compound Women today. Yeah, so we have Tanya and Paige here. Let's talk a little bit about these archers. I mean, both of them have a career in this industry already. I mean, everybody knows them on the international stage. Um, Paige is third in the world. Yeah, and I think Tanya right now is 10th in the world. Yep, and they're always, every shoot shoot off against them is just a great watch. Um, yeah, they've definitely done this match a couple times before. Yeah, and they're very comfortable shooting on the line in 20 seconds, shooting against each other. And it, I mean, we're looking at a really good match here. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of wind, as you can see, kind of right to left, which is a little unusual on this field, but not too bad right now, so I wouldn't expect that bad of no, a no, struggle. I, I'm not yeah, I don't think this wind is going to be anything for these girls. They the, they, uh, are they allowed to they're going to smash this wind for sure. Okay. Yeah. So Paige just won the indoor national final last weekend. That was after a long NFAA tournament, and then U.S. Archery had their event right at the end. How was that? I know you shot that, too. How was that competing in that way, and how does that affect all the other ways you compete? Um, it, I mean, that whole week, it was a week of scoring arrows. It was really draining, but Paige is strong. She shoots a lot of arrows, um, and obviously she came out ahead in one of the last events. She, she is coming here with confidence, and that's why she's shooting the gold medal match today. Yeah, I know I was at the indoor national final too, and it was definitely tricky for me to switch from indoor to outdoor so quickly because after the whole pandemic, the international stuff all got canceled and we were just focusing on outdoor and getting ready. How did you make that shift, especially because there were so many different types of disciplines? Yeah, I basically just wanted to stick with the same bow and yeah. and just keep that feel of the same bow I didn't want to move my peep or anything like that just changed rests and I mean it definitely helped but it, it was different getting back home after shooting 20 yards yeah going right into outdoors so here you can see the two archers are coming out we have Tanny on target one yeah, Paige is here on target two and no coaches today no coaches uh, I think yeah. we just have arrow agents yeah just arrow agents it looks like so Tanya is shooting for Matthews, and Paige is shooting for Botech. And Tanya actually qualified first with a 701. That is a very stout score. Yeah, and it would in some tricky win too. Yeah. I think and it what was it only one point separated the men's first place from the women's first place? No, nope, I or I was first place for the men, and me and Tanya tied, but she had oh, more you tens tied. than me. Oh, oh. Yep. Okay. She shot one eight, and then one more ten than me. There you go. All right, and here we go. I believe Tanya is shooting first. I believe so. Usually the number one ranked archer picks to go first, but that is a personal preference. Now, Tanya is a very fast shooter, so Paige is really going to have to maintain her time here. Solid 10 from Solid Tanya. Solid 10 on the left side there, and so you can see there's definitely some push of that wind. I, b I bet she broke right in the middle there, and yeah. the wind just moved it just a touch. Paige just a low 9. Low 9. like a good shot from Tanny there. Yeah, I broke strong. Yeah, she probably right just gave it a little bit of correction holding on that right side. So it only took Tanya 10 seconds to shoot that arrow. Yeah. There's definitely a little bit of, I don't want to say strategy to that, but you can definitely try to push your opponent in some cases and make them feel uncomfortable if you're such a quick shooter. Absolutely. And Paige matches Tanya's dead center arrow with one of her own. Very good 30 from Tanya there. It's a nice way to start off this match. Oh, wow. Very two solid X's. She's going to have to somewhere. check the knock on that one. Yeah. Very possible. She could have done that Robin Hood, as a lot of people say. Well, that's a great start for the women. Kind of what we were expecting with this wind. Um, Tanya has been shooting great all weekend. And yeah. Just shows there. I mean, she's dialed in. And Paige with that one little bobble, but I mean, one points you can make that up. One point can be easily made up. But on that note, how we're talking can be made up. How do these compound matches work? So these compound matches, it is five ends of three arrows, 
for a and it's a cumulative scoring. So for a perfect match, it's a 150. Um, now any arrow calls, um, we'll put up like a nine star on the board, and the judge will make the final decision on that. But it's high score wins, and um, right now, I mean, this is world class shooting right here, 30 to 29. Can't really ask for anything more than that. Yeah, that's both of these are internationally competitive archers, and they've probably actually done this exact match in multiple different countries. Oh, so. for sure. Yeah, they're very good friends, very comfortable shooting against each other. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot of smiles here, which yep. you might be shocked to see in a gold medal match with everything on the line, but that's just who these people are. So Paige shot the lesser of the scores in the first end, so she'll start us off. Looks like a great X. Her last three O's have been yeah, right in the middle. We made that first correction, and she's pounding now in the middle. And that's still Paige's target. Yep. I th Looked like a good 10 from here. Yeah. Looks like maybe just on the top side. Yep. And Paige is actually shooting very quick for... Yeah. Especially shooting against Tanya. Yeah, she's... I think she's been working a lot on her release and the way she releases and holds the release, so I think yep. that's really been helping her. And I believe that's a 10 on the low side for Tanya. It's great 30 from Paige there. That's a nice 30. Yep, there's Tanya's arrows. That is a nine just low, it looked like. So it looks like we're all tied up. Yeah. Those scores are all correct. And it does look like they're sharing a coach. Um, yeah, that's an interesting. I mean, everybody here is all good friends. So yeah. Paul Tedford seems to be the coach for kind of both of them. <laughs> yep. And you just see smiling and laughing, so they're yeah. having a good time up there, which is what you like to see. So one interesting fact is Paige and Tanya both have shot 900 in the Vegas. They have. So... I know that's a very challenging thing to do because then you come into that shoot-off, at least for the the open division. Do you think it's far off to see the women having that same, you know, 20-something people in that one division shooting clean? Because there's only been um, six women in the world to do that so far. So how, how likely do you think that big push for a big shoot-off like that will be? Um, I definitely could see it. Um, I think in the next couple of years we'll see maybe three or four be tied at it, and then it'll just keep progressing from there. Yeah. Um, I've never shot a 900 in Vegas. That's one of the hardest things in the sport, yes. just mentally. But, I mean, this just shows how good of shots these women are. Yeah, just saying, Brady Ellison, recurver, has now done it, and yep. you have not. Yep, so. oh, I know, <laughs> I know. There also is a lot of competition. <laughs> I think strive for that 900 too. And Tanya will start because she shot a 29 in the last end. X. And that's a great X, yeah. She got her zero back after that last end. Yeah. So both of these women just having that one dip, but everything else has been solid. There's a little bit longer of a hold from Paige, and right, right by that group. Right in that same group. Another great X from Tanya. Man, these women can shoot. Yeah, they can definitely put them in the middle. And this will be a definitely a high-scoring match, I think. Yeah. Great X from Beautiful Paige. X. Nice clean, clean release there. Yeah, she got that off about normal shot timing. Yeah. So Paige has just recently made a switch from a wrist-mounted trigger to a thumb button. Jimmy, you shoot a thumb button too. Yep. What have you noticed the difference between those different types of releases? And some people even shoot a back tension. Yeah, I don't have much experience with a wrist strap. Um, I know she stopped shooting it because I think she ha was having shoulder issues, um, shoulder or wrist issues. Mm -hmm. So, and they weren't 
it wasn't as bad with a thumb button. So that's why she decided to go to a handheld. Um, now I know she shoots the thumb button more of a back tension than a command release. Um, she shoots it the correct way. Yeah. Um, unlike some other people. But uh, like uh, Jimmy over here, I don't <laughs> think she hits, as you would call properly. Yeah. Um, but Taney kind of does the same thing as Paige. She yeah. shoots a thumb button that's very back tension. I mean, it's there's not a lot of yeah, command. Yeah, you wrap or punch. your thumb around that peg and just pull, and then by the way you pull, it sets it off instead of squeezing a trigger. Yep. So going into the fourth end here, Tanya is now up one point. Three X's Three for X's. Tanya. Wow. We'll see if Paige can bring back another 30. Paige will be shooting first because she's down in the match. Yep. Paige is shooting way quicker than she usually does in matches, which I like. Yeah. That, that last shot was good. a little long, but everything else has been about 10 second total mm -hmm. shot. Yep. Nice 10. It's a good 10 from Tanya. That's definitely something you see, I don't want to say more often in compound archers, because there's definitely some archers that'll shoot long in recurve and really short in compound, but it seems like compound is a bit more aiming usually. What are these archers seeing through their sight there? So I know Paige shoots a higher power lens, so um, I'm pretty sure Tanya is around like a 6 power lens, but Paige is more around an 8. So... Paige is seeing a lot more movement up there. Yeah. And when it gets windy, that makes it a lot harder. Um, Paige we just drops another low. one Both low. Both of them low. That was a little bit longer of a hold there. Just adjust a couple clicks in our sight. Those sights are super adjustable, and the smallest click can move it right into the middle. Another wow. 30 from Tanya. She's shooting really strong. 19. So what power lens do you see? I, I shoot an eight power lens, um, and I I get really close up in there. I mean, all I can yeah. all I can really see is the red. Um, wow. I'm sure Paige is very similar. Mm -hmm. um, I know people. Some people don't like that, but me and Paige are a little bit different than a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. What would you say is something for compound archers looking to switch maybe their power from indoor to outdoor, and what you see and what works? I know. I would probably say four power is the is the most common. Um, you see a lot of people like Braden and Tate, they're running the four powers and they have, I mean, Braden's been doing it for longer than we've been alive. Yeah. So. And is that for both indoor and outdoor? So people can kind of do that? Yep. Yeah. Um, the, uh, some people might like a little bit more indoors um, because there's no wind. They might see less movement. And also it could be the other way around. They might want more outside because it's a little bit further. Yeah. yeah. Well, just personal preference and what yeah. works. I shoot an 8 for everything. That's all I own. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right, so Paige is going to start here. I believe she's done by 3 in this match. I think that's another low arrow. Uh -huh. <laughs> so Paige might just need to either keep a nice strong shot. That'll sometimes get it higher up, or you can always click the side too. Yeah. That was a good clean shot from there Paige there. Yeah. Yep, and Paige might have that low one. Yeah, that might be in. It's definitely going to pull the line and see if it gets it in. Another quick shot from Tanya. She's on a roll. Yeah. She's really dialed into the middle with this wind. And yep. She has been all weekend. She was all last week, too. Yeah. There's a 10, and that like would be 146, 145, depending on that bottom arrow. Tanya just needs gold here. And that is a 149, it looks like. That's going to be hard to beat. Yeah, that's competitive in every division. That's, yeah. That is stout. And there's a good amount of X's on that, too. I'd be confident with that score in the next match, too. Yeah. Brain and Tate. Yeah, they both can shoot those scores every day. So they're probably going to look at Paige's bottom arrow. All it has to do is just touch the line, and that then gets the higher arrow value. Yep, the outside diameter of the arrow. Um, 
the outer edge just has to touch the line. So that's an interesting thing you'll see going from indoor to outdoor is these archers are shooting very skinny arrows where for indoor they probably shoot a little bit fatter arrows to try to get those lines whenever you can because you don't have to worry about wind and other factors. Yeah, exactly. We see a lot of, some people come out here with some bigger arrows and just try it out, but yeah, they the, the wind kind of sets that away. But Yeah, perfect conditions probably wouldn't be bad, but right. can't always have perfect. Tanya with the nice pose, and then we'll bring on the compound men here.